Anytime you have to play music at whatever occasion and you don't have a proper printed edition or memorize the music, you will need to play from copied sheet music. Unless you use an iPad or a tablet, of course, then you can skip this video. But that's a lot of occasions. Trust me, I've been doing this professionally for many years and anytime you have to play with a singer or a choir or some students for concerts, recordings, rehearsals, auditions, competitions, or just for a wedding or a reception. Anyway, they send you a score of whatever you're supposed to play on email, or you go find it yourself on IMSLP, and it's usually a lot of pages. But you need a system of how to organize all the sheets together. And they don't teach you this in music schools, but you need to know how to tape your music properly. My name is Henrik Chilam. I'm a classical pianist and normally I do analysis videos on piano pieces on this channel but in this video I'm going to show you my foolproof system of how to tape all these endless sheet music pages together quickly, efficiently, robustly and in a way that folds nicely. Let's get into it. Let's start easy. Say we have a piece that consists of three pages, like this song for mezzo-soprano by Swedish composer Hilding Havnas that I did last autumn. We're going to be playing this with all three pages on the stand as one spread, so we don't need to worry about the page turns yet. So start with pages two and three, put them together, take your sticky tape, just normal tape, one, put your hand down to keep them steady for the top, one tape, for the bottom, and one for the middle. The first pages are taped. Now, you can do them vertically if you want. It's a bit more narrower on each side of the tape for the paper, so it requires a bit more careful handling. The way I do it vertically can withstand more rough handling, so I can do it quicker. And it's sturdy enough, especially when you have the middle tape. And it's quite efficient use of tape. I mean, why use more tape than you need to write? Okay, so now we move on to the first page. We fold it like this, that it's gonna be folded so we can carry it around when you're not playing it. And we take now these two pages, we put the corner together like this, and we can hold it in the left hand, take a tape, and tape it like this when it's in the folded position. Bottom, oops, and middle. So, then when you get to the piano, fold it out and you have a nice spread. So, there's a difference between taping it when it's in this uh, stable position or it's in the fold position. So, if we try to fold this, you can see it's not perfectly flat. It gets a bit wobbly. I mean, it's not a big deal. You can definitely, you know, push down and... Uh, go for this but the paper is a little bit squished and it can add up if you have many pages so something I played last week a violin concerto by reading quite a few pages I have taped this now to be turned this way if I fold it the other way instead so like this this is not how it's supposed to be now you can see that the pages get a bit wobbly, it takes more space, so I prefer it to tape in the right folding position from the start. Okay, moving on. Let's say we have a piece of four pages that we will play. Let's see if we're done with the Havnas. This I played the other week with a cellist, a piece by Dvorak. It's four pages. Now, it's possible to play with all four pages in one spread if you have a grand piano, although it's a little uncomfortable if you're playing in the bass and have to look all the way over there for the fourth page. But if you play on an upright piano or an electric piano, it's probably going to be too much to have four pages at once. So then we have the natural way of including a page turn. So we will have page one and two and then turn to three and four. And we start to make these booklets just like any books. Uh, so, in my way of doing, we're taping it in this right position. So I'm just going to do this really quickly. And there we go. 
we now have a booklet of four pages. We need to do one more thing when it's like this, because now the title page is just a blank white page. So we need to just write what piece it is for our indexing to be effective. Because when we have all the different pieces uh, taped together, pretty piles of sheets, you need to be able to differentiate what pieces are there in the right uh, pile and everything. So, Dvorak, what was the name? Valdes Ruhe. Valdes Ruhe for cello. And we can even add here, it's in D flat major. Sometimes, like for songs especially, you need to write the key to see uh, uh, what key this arrangement is in. This is in Swedish, by the way. Okay, now, say we have a piece that consists of five pages. So I'm just gonna grab an extra page that does not belong to this, because I don't need to tape everything again. Now we can kind of combine these two ideas. So if there was an extra page, we can have it uh, in the beginning. So we have a three spread and then a two spread. Or we can have the extra, the fifth page in the end. So we'll have a two spread and then a turn and a three spread. And when you add pages, you just add more of the two spreads in the middle and you have this option of either in the beginning or the end. But now we get to an important point. It's about the page turns. And I would recommend when you're using this system of taping it differently to plan the page turns beforehand. It can be some tough decisions, but it's worth it to have all the music ready when you will play. So you don't have to worry about that later. So here there are basically three steps that you need to take to decide where the page turns should be. The first is, are there any repeats? Because you want to avoid turning in the middle of a repeat if it's possible. Sometimes it's not if it's long repeat, but if you have like three pages with a repeat in the beginning, well then you put the, your th three spread first uh, as an example. The second step, you can look at the scanned copy of the music. Uh, sometimes you have page numbers from the original in the corners. So if it's in the right corners, an uneven number, then in the original edition someone made the decision that it should be on the right and the page turn should be there. For example, if we look at the um, reading concertino again, we can see that... Oop, it's folded wrongly now. <laughs> if it's folded the, the way I planned it, we can see here 3 and then 5 and 4. So this was the way that they planned it and I followed that. Uh, and you, if we compare these two pages, this bar and this bar, it's much easier to turn here when you have longer note values and when the H notes, it's nice to not have to turn there. So look at those uh, page numbers in the corners, if there are any. Sometimes they're not there for the scanning. But that's a good suggestion. Uh, I usually follow them, but not always, because sometimes that's a bad decision and you should take your own decision. So the third step is when you have to choose where your page turns should be. Well, that's easy. Compare the pages. Choose the one when it's easiest for the last bars or bar. And then, well, you only have two decisions. It's one half of the pages that you turn or the other. Uh, and then you have this first or last page. You can have a three spread. Okay, now we're through the first step of taping a piece like this. Just one final thing, if you have many pages like 10 or 15, for example, what I played last week, also a flute sonatina by Berkeley. It's quite a, quite a decent amount of pages here, three movement sonatina. Then you can add a tape on the back to make it more sturdy. So, and the same top, middle, bottom. Now, if you have a big load of music and it's kind of impractical to have them all as separate units, you need to order them in a better way, there is one stronger option. And I use it especially when I need a collection of music for like background music gigs. And it's the binder. So now the planning of the page turns is exactly the same, but the taping is slightly easier because you only need to tape two pages because we have the metal rings in the middle. So let's say we have a piece of five pages, like this Mozart aria that I have done with, with the singer. So first you decide where the page turns is gonna be. And in this one, I've decided that I'm gonna do three plus two. So 
in the end it's going to be two and then we turn it like this uh, here's the turn and we have a three first so you put them in order like they're going to be in the binder like this then we make holes in it for the binder then let's wait with the first page we need to tape together this page and this page. Whoops. <laughs> Fail. No. And now for the first page, we tape them together as well. And then we cut out the holes with the scissors. Like this. And now, when we put this in the binder, this is what I will be playing next week, by the way. Put it in the binder, and voila! We have the three spread right there. And look at that. Here was a fermata, perfect for the page turn as well. So I bid you all happy taping. Next lesson is on how to turn a piece of music. I made a short video on that. You can follow the link. Special shout out to my Patreon sponsors, Jane Neerman, B. Nagoyan and E. Silver Race.